You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. I said, hey, hey, welcome to the Man Cave Happy Hour. I said, hey, hey, welcome to the Man Cave Happy Hour. We're going to drink a fine whiskey and smoke a really fine cigar. All right, it is time for happy hour. It is the Man Cave Happy Hour, whiskey, cigar, spirits, the stories that go along with it. I'm Jamie Flanagan. I am Matt Fox. And we are obviously on the road, Matt. We are on the road. Oh, <laughs> there are some goodies sitting around us at the moment. <laughs> yeah, please. We've uh, we've taken the <laughs> we've taken the party. It's all right. We've taken the party on the road and uh we've been dying to do this. Yes. We've been, We've been talking to, we made, we made, that's the great thing about doing the podcast is where we, we've made great friends, yes. uh, just around the city and, and we've been like, we got to do this. We got to do this. Mm -hmm. And finally we're at Keiko's market it's and, uh, this, Joe is, Keiko's. this is a destination oh my for folks to come and visit and talk to these individuals because they know so much more than we do. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's something we found is, is, is we've been talking to, you know, you noticed that we had this uh, guy talk about Japanese whiskey yes. yesterday yes. Yeah. and we talked about these national distributors and there's names that pop up in the city and Keiko's is always one of them is, is one of those stores that, you know, moves interesting bottles and has interesting product mm -hmm. and is knowledgeable and uh we thank you for letting us in, in invade your space uh, we're invading your space no just no, so no my know. pleasure uh <laughs> so uh flanagan and i have a relationship he's a great guy and we talk about these things all the time and for us you know over the years it's just becoming friends with our clients just knowing what they want trying to find the most interesting things for them you know that's that's become the challenge today mm. in today's bourbon world, especially, you know, any, any retailer can go out there and buy, you know, 30, 40, 50 barrels of bourbon mm -hmm. uh, throughout the year, but it's trying to find the stuff that's interesting. The stuff that, right. that really, you know, tantalizes the palate and makes people think, <laughs> wow, I've never had anything like this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I feel our job is. I have this, responsibility as they say yeah. so uh we take it seriously and in this business they there's a saying uh they say you're only as good as your last bottle okay Ooh, so fair. this is a very serious That's fair. Uh, only as good as your last movie only as yes, good as your last bottle yes yes so you could sell one bottle yeah, yeah. You can, can you sell the second <laughs> one you, right right this more. is a so so that's the thing you have to you know when you're investing in a barrel you know these barrels can be you know eight ten thousand dollars a barrel True. uh you don't really want to be sitting on that you yeah. want somebody to love it mm -hmm. and you want somebody to talk about it online and uh, tell their friends and invite people over and say hey you know i'm having an incredible bourbon come and you know share this with me yeah uh make an experience as they say <laughs> and uh so that that's you know we take it very seriously well because we got a, a very special barrel we wanted to talk about yes but mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the story of Keiko's, right? Yes, to give us, give you. us to Joe. Tell me about your childhood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've been in Birmingham for 46 years this year. Wow. wow. Okay. At this location for 40 years. All right. And the previous location was a little closer to downtown Birmingham. Wow. And so uh, over the years we've evolved. We used to be uh, really small. Uh, we used to actually be a market. We used hmm. to have. Um, a little meat section and oh. groceries <laughs> yeah, yeah. and all this stuff. And uh, my dad, God bless him, especially, uh, and my mom, they used to say to my brother and I, you're not going to work here. You're going to be better than me. You're going to go to college <laughs> and you're going to have a real job and have yeah, two-week yeah. vacations. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so as a result, uh, I have three college degrees <laughs> and my brother has two. Right, right. And he was almost done with his, uh, his, his uh, law degree and I was almost done with my doctorate and our dad passed away mm. and when that happened my brother and i said i said you know you go to school and i'll i'll work here mm -hmm. and then we'll trade off when you're done and then he said okay i'll help you and uh we started spending more time here as adults not just as younger uh, employees <laughs> and we thought you know this is not so bad we started uh ordering the stuff that we liked and we yeah. brought in more scotches and more wines and <laughs> uh you know interesting things and we kind of made it our own 
And when we made our own, we realized it's kind of fun to interact with our clients and yeah. make friends yeah. and uh, sell stuff that we really like and we can talk about and we can try. Love it. And uh, here we are today, 46 years later. Wow. And the same, you know, second same, generation, with that. second generation. Yeah. And sometimes uh, my kids are here. <laughs> so it's definitely a family business because uh, your mom, when, when it, when it was safer, was around yes, uh, a lot. Loves seeing the clients. <laughs> and so people will come in and, you know, if we're not here, we're busy and they'll say, uh, you know, Mrs. Kekos, I really like this wine. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> and she'll say, honey, I don't know. It, I've had it before. It is good. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> she'll say, I don't know how to use all these words like the boys do. Sure, sure. But this is a good one. But then how do you disagree with her? That, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> you don't disagree with mom. Yes. <laughs> I love it. It's true. And But she's here and through osmosis. She sure. uh, gets some of this information. And she'll talk about things. And it just becomes, a, like you said, a family affair. Really fun. And for us, it's I can really say that we actually love coming to work mm -hmm. to see our clients every day again that have become our friends. Yeah, it's just enjoyable to come to work. You know, it's not it's not even you're not even working because you enjoy right. what you right. do. You yeah, wake work, up, you're like, I'm gonna go have a correct. good time. You know, work is not the right word for yeah, it. So yeah. for us, it's just uh, doing what we enjoy yeah. and yeah. seeing people that we really care about, we love and. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can't go wrong. We're blessed. And so I say that every day. You, and you do. And you, you always super cordial. Cause when Thank I first you. started coming in, there's some party stores and we talk about that, yes. that, uh, they're a little snooty or, <laughs> you know, Hey, I'm looking for this bottle. And it's like, well, only if you've only, only if you've spent so much money right. with me in the past. And it's right. like, you, you guys were never like that. Yeah. Like, I don't like to um, do that. I'll tell you as a, as a business model, if mm -hmm. you're smart about it, I understand. And there's a reasoning sometimes where stores will say, I'm going to save this for somebody and I'm going to do this for, you know, for my special clients. Yeah. But now you're just deleting a whole yeah. slew of people. Yeah. Right? Uh, and for us, you know, we'll throw stuff on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that people would come in and if they're here on a random day, they might see something fun. Sure. And they'll tell their friends they bought something and, mm -hmm. and their friends say, Hey, I got to go to that store too. And see what's going <laughs> right, on there. So, right it breeds more curiosity yeah. and uh, people come in and, you know, for us, for that kind of stuff, that's easy. You know, before, you know, we realized this is many years ago. I mean, you know, for past 20 years, bourbon and, and scotches and all these things are becoming more and more popular, but I would need a full-time person right. to literally track every limited uh, wine right. and sure. cigar right. and, and bourbon and all that. And, you know, it's just too much. We just like seeing people come on in. You never mm -hmm. know what you're going to find, and that's the charm of it. So. But at 46 years, you've 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 built quite a reputation. Like we Thank mentioned, you. that the, the people know about you guys, which has afforded you the opportunity to yes. do some interesting things with some of the dis distillers. What yes. in the past? What are some of the barrels that you've been most proud of? Like in the past, what are, what Great are some question. cool things that you've done? Great question. So. Mm -hmm. I will tell you the first four roses we ever did. Okay. Ooh, one of this my is, faves. <laughs> this is even before like we were on social media, before all this stuff. Gosh, I don't even remember how many years ago this was. It was a while back. And we were really excited. And the driver comes in, he brings the cases, and he brings nine six packs. So that's 54 bottles. Right. <laughs> on average, a barrel can be anywhere from 140 to 240 max. Right. Right. So he brings in 56 bottles and we're so excited. It's our first four roses. <laughs> uh -huh. And I said, uh, you know, where's the rest? Yeah. yeah. And he said, this is it. Oh. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, this is all I got. And oh. we never found out. We don't know if it was, you know, sometimes the barrels will leak. Yeah. Sometimes the they're damaged. The evaporation. Something, was, uh, yeah. whatever it was. Sure. That's what happened here. So that's one heck of an angel share. That was yeah. one <laughs> angel share. We still have clients. So again, this is before we did any social media or anything like yeah. that. So, Whoever bought those mm. bottles, uh, you know, they could buy two or more or whatever. Yeah. So we still have clients that have these bottles and they cherish this. Uh. Like, this is our first, you know, Caicos release of a Four Roses, uh. you know, many years ago. And, you know, people nurture it and they cherish it uh -huh. and they sip on it. And uh, it's become a really big deal. Uh. The other thing is what we just released, which yes. is our, uh, what we called our Japanese, quote unquote, Japanese edition yeah. of the Maker's Mark. And that one was a really, really cool story because three years ago, I was, a, so, so just to backtrack a little bit, when this program, the Maker's Mark Private Select mm -hmm. Barrel started, 
uh, I was the, f we were the first retailer in Michigan to do the project. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, the 41st retailer in the United States. Wow. wow. And so, uh, back then, this was like 2017, uh, not everybody was super gung ho about this because you really have to mix, you have to sit there and on average, it's going to take you five, six hours to put this project together. Wow. Sure. Yeah. And so you sit there and you pick 10 staves and these 10 staves go into the barrel and that's what gives it flavor and color. Mm -hmm. So uh, did that 2017 sold really well. 2018, I'm there and I mixed up this recipe mm -hmm. and uh, I put it all together and I loved it. I was really proud of it. And I always ask if anybody's done this before. Yeah. Because in some of the recipes I've done, I was the only retailer in Michigan to do it. Mm -hmm. First retailer in the United States to ever do it. So that's a great selling point. And uh, they said, yeah, it was a, it was a group of uh, Japanese. It was a Japanese group that did it. Huh. And I said, what's that? And they said, Japanese group. And I said, oh, that wow, that's interesting. And I inquired a little bit more. Yes, so that's, yeah. those yeah, are understand. the staves that they're, they're still uh, kind of moist and you can smell them. <laughs> yeah. It smells like a, a, a chocolate store or a candy factory. Is that yeah. the actual barrel? That's the actual barrel, yes. Uh, uh -huh. So you get you pick these, yes, and then they dangle in the barrel, correct. And then that, how how long do they hang out there? So anywhere general? from uh, usually around six months. Another six which, months yes. to to add this to add the flavor profile, flavors. and that gives a color, aromatics, flavor. So when I found out it was this Japanese group, I came back, and again this was 2018, and I I told this to my clients, and my clients said, "Wow, what do you mean? You know, <laughs> they, they were because as you know, Japanese whiskey has become so popular." Yeah, and in your previous uh, segments, right, you were talking about Japanese whiskey and yeah. how popular they've become. Yeah, and so in in the last podcast, very informative, talking about why they've become popular, some of the scarcity, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I say this to my clients, and they said, "Did you have a palate for Japanese whiskey?" <laughs> and then they were asking if these this group, this Japanese group, you know, they like a certain bourbon. Why did I pick this? Why did they pick this? Mm -hmm. Either way, it piqued people, people's curiosity. And that first year, 240 bottles in a couple of days, we sold them. Sure. Wow. Because back then, if you remember, you've been to our tastings. Yeah. We mm -hmm. do these tastings and uh, we would order noble fish. That was the Japanese aspect of things. Yeah, yeah, we would yeah. order barbecue yeah. uh, from uh -huh. you know, uh, the, the wood pile down here in Clawson. And people would love it. And you know, they'd enjoy it and we'd sell it out of it in a heartbeat. Last year, same concept. Right. This year I was kind of nervous because we didn't have any tastings. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, you know, I have a whole new set of clientele now. Sure. Are they going to understand this? But within a couple of days, we sold probably 112, 113 bottles. Okay. Oh, so yeah. All right. uh, 240 yeah. bottles, that's pretty good. They're uh, they're clipping away. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It, by the weekend, you'll probably be out. Probably. And <laughs> so yeah. uh, you're a smart businessman. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just something really unique. And at the end of the day, this is a cask strength, uh, uh, barrel project, stave infused, cellar age, weeded bourbon. I mean, again, not even... Uh, uh, I don't want to say it, but not even Pappy Van Winkle does all that. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get into the Pappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, no, not yet. No, no, not yet. <laughs> yeah, so those two, I'm really proud of the. the but is the program ones. changing? It's um, Yes, yes. And so this is kind of like the last run of, so of this sort of. It, it might be the last run. I, I say it might be. I will tell you, uh, Jim Beam Centauri is one of the best companies to work with. Yeah. Uh, they're very accommodating they're very creative they're very innovative and so to your point there's five staves that are used in this project okay and one of the staves they're taking it away so this is the mm. last year it's going to be used and i use that one stave. it's called the roasted french mocha okay and i would argue probably a good chunk of the recipes that people done all over the united states mm. use that stave inside there huh because it gives everything a this cocoa kind of mm. roasted mm -hmm. Uh, balanced, uh, really flavorful finish. Okay. And it's going away. So God willing, ideally, they're great to work with. Uh, even now, to do this three times, they don't really encourage a retailer to do this over and over again. They want you to do different recipes. Yeah. So they've been- So really was this coming. the same recipe this uh, was three years same. in a row? So three years in a row, oh, same recipe. Okay. The only difference is that depending on the alcohol content- Sure. Okay. It'll be subtly different. So 
Right. Uh, this batch is 109.8. Okay, that's and nice. Have, that's healthy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's got a, I, I would imagine that's got a little bit of a, uh, a, a burn to the, to the back of you it, know, but in a nice way. <laughs> it's, it has a warmth. We like to say warmth. Oh, warmth. Yes, okay. warmth. So so burn has a negative kind sure, of sure, sure, fair, sure. fair. Yes, and, and also, you know, this is something that I like to tell my clients all the time. You know, in, in the United States, there, you know, everything's so fast paced and mm -hmm. everybody, you know, they're excited and you get a bottle and you go home and you pop it open and you just want to drink it. I always tell my clients, just take your time, mm -hmm. especially now with, you know, this past unique year that we've had, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, slow down, pour. I always tell my clients, pour a glass, take a sip and then let the glass sit there yeah. for five minutes, just for five minutes. <laughs> and it changes so yeah. much. Maybe and on my second glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so you, yes. so you know, that, after that you're first right. sip, you know, you, you're getting your palate used to that ethanol, this is true. right? This is but true. then let it sit for a few this and then true. come back, you're going like to get something. Yeah, completely. let it open up to the air. It's and, oxidizing, yeah. right? Just like yeah. a fine wine. Yeah. yeah. It's oxidizing and that calms it down yeah. because what people don't realize is that alcohol is uh, uh, an invisible barrier for your olfactory sense mm -hmm. and your palate. Mm -hmm. So it's it's creating a barrier to all the great flavors. When you let it breathe and that alcohol breathes off, now you're getting to the vanilla, the caramel, right, the butterscotch right. and toffee, and cinnamon and all these other things that are there. So mm -hmm. just taking your time. Sure. Uh, and if you don't have patience for that, one ice cube is perfect. One mm -hmm. ice cube will accelerate the oxidation process. Mm -hmm. And it makes it taste great. So mm -hmm. if you have the patience, you will. Be now, how rewarded. big should the ice cube be? So, yeah. so it's interesting. This is a. This is a. You know, we can have a whole conversation. Yeah, I know. Ice ice. Ice. Uh, I will tell you. I just use uh, just a regular average ice cube. Yeah. But um, in my earlier days, you know, pre kids and all mm -hmm. that, uh, when I had time to do this, mm -hmm. there's actually a whole style and form of making ice. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And uh, whether you want it to be clear, uh, and you know, some traditional, some really, if you want to really geek out on this, uh, the fluoride and the chlorine that are in water mm -hmm. can affect uh, uh, oh. the taste of oh, the alcohol. I would right? imagine, yeah. yeah. I will tell so you, it's another chemical that's being put exactly. into it. Yeah. I will tell you the craziest story, if I may. Sure. I had a client, this is years ago, and they would buy a uh, raspberry vodka all the time, right? At least once a week, they get a half gallon, they have cocktails, whatever. And he, the, the husband comes in one day and he says, Joe, uh, I think we got a bad batch. We got a bad batch of vodka here. Mm -hmm. And I said, really, what happened? And he said, it just didn't taste right. And it smelled horrible and mm. all this stuff. And I said, Mr. <laughs> Mr. So-and-so, uh, you know, please don't take this the wrong way. But, um, you know, was it, did you leave it somewhere? Uh, was it, I'm asking him all these questions. Yeah, yeah. The cat get into it. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> so he said, nope, 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 nope. And uh, it's interesting. You're not far off here. So I said to him, look, oh, uh, how are you drinking this? And he says, uh, I just put some ice in a glass and, you know, we drink it. That's, you're not doing anything fancy here. I said, you know, it could be your ice, you know, where your ice is. I just threw it out there. Oh. He got a little bit, you know. you know, like I was insulting him a little bit yeah. or something. Mm. I said, with all due respect, just, just check your ice maker goes home and s mentions this to his wife. Oh boy. His wife says, uh, you know, Oh no, let's look in there. They look in there. He had gone fishing the week before. Oh, and oh. Big, <laughs> big fish, that big slab of fish is right there by the ice machine. And it had opened up. Oh yeah. And basically the ice had absorbed all those aromatics. Oh, oh. And so when they were drinking their raspberry vodka, yeah, yeah, it yeah. had a, Wonderful like salmon flavored salmon raspberry walleye, vodka, right? uh, yeah. <laughs> the walleye twang do it. Yeah, that would that would be would wonder. So so ice can be that's an extreme sure. Example, oh yeah. But ice can be it's a very detailed thing. So it's one of those ooh taste. Yes, right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> so uh, you know, there's a lot of things out there that can affect the way uh, you know the taste and flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. Even you know, if you're eating something, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people say, Oh, I had this great product. And I say, Where were you? And they say, uh, again, another anecdote. One of my clients, uh, when everything was normal, she'd go to Mexico around this time. Oh boy! And she comes back and she says, "Joe, there's a tequila I want." And at the time, it was Clase Azul, that blue and white bottle. Yeah, uh, ah, yeah famous yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she says, uh, "I said, okay, I'll get it for you. I got it." And she buys a bottle and she goes home and she says, it "Doesn't taste the same." <laughs> and I said, uh, "Mrs. So and So, it's the same bottle. You sent me the picture. It's the same bottle." And she says, no, it doesn't taste the same. I said, when you were drinking it, where were you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she says, 
while I was at, at the at the pool on the resort in mm -hmm. Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I said, and how are you drinking it? And she says, oh, I'd have, you know, one ice or two ice, you know, a little ice cube. I said, and who was serving you? And she said, a handsome young man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> In hot by. pants. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. So, and then by the you know third or fourth question, she says, okay, I understand where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> so ambiance, sure, uh, sure. things contribute yeah, to yeah. the experience. Yep. So, oh, fair yeah. enough. Yes. They <laughs> actually... And Absolutely. I have those experiences when I'm out west. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm you know I'm a little bit higher in elevation, yes. and when you taste something, and then you get home, it may not taste the same. Oh because yeah, because even the elevation can can There's, affect it. They actually call this uh, they call this the Provence Rosé effect, <laughs> because uh, in Europe, a lot of uh, British people would go to uh, the Provence region re region of France, and they would have rosé all the time. Yeah. yeah. And then they ship it back home, and they say to their friends, "This is incredible. This is." This tastes great and everything like that and their friends would be like yeah. yeah i don't know i'm not really getting what you're so excited about mm -hmm. and again it had to do where you were at what right. yep. to your point elevation uh can play lack of oxygen mm -hmm. all that stuff uh, can definitely play with the chemistry mm -hmm. of what's going on and so. other things you might be consuming when absolutely. you're on a vacation like absolutely. that too. especially if you're in colorado <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Colorado. So, so you, you yeah. I'm sorry, Jamie. Right, uh, you, you've actually talked a lot about your clientele. Yes. Right. I love my clients. Have any of your clients ever turned you on to something that took you by surprise? No doubt about it. Uh, so in whether it's wine, you know, like in wine, yeah. for example, there's 300,000 products being sold in the United States. In liquor, you know, usually we would go to trade shows. This mm. year there was no trade shows. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. So typically, if you're on top of everything, trade shows. I get all these blogs and all these things. And even with the blogs, even with the trade journals, mm. even with trade shows, even with all these things, I'm never going to know everything. Mm. And so I do rely on our clients mm. to say to us, hey, I was in so-and-so. I went to a restaurant. I was at whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have this? And sometimes it doesn't sound like it's going to be a big hit like uh, – Screwball. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I don't understand screwball. Okay, so, I don't know. So I don't understand it. I was like, I don't know about this. I tried it. I thought it was, yeah. it was interesting. Yeah. Um, but people love it. Yeah. So at some point it's, and, and this, this applies to the barrels too. I can't just buy something or sell something that I just like. Mm. It has to be with the clients. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, Snakes and sparklers. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Snake. They're, they're the bread and butter. So you gotta, yeah. So uh, you gotta rely on the clients. And so, uh, yeah. So they'll say things, and whether it's screwball or, you know, who knows what else. Yeah. If they want it, I will get it for them. Sure. Uh, but, but you know, definitely clients are the best resource because if they don't like it. We'll like, tell you. It, yeah, it could be the biggest, <laughs> best, most, you know. I was hounding you about something, and you finally got it. It might have been like the Eric Church, Jack Daniels. Maybe, yes. Yeah. That comes I was, I was bugging there. you about that, and yes. I was something else I was hounding you about, and you're like, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. Well, <laughs> and so it was great, and you go you out want. of your way. That's our motto with you, whatever your heart desires. <laughs> uh, but, you know, some things, it's, it's hard because some things people come in and ask for, and I just can't get it for yeah. various reasons. Mm -hmm. Either it's not sold here. But our angle, if you talk to anybody that knows us, is that we kind of take this Buddhist philosophy towards things in the sense that instead of saying, okay, well, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have this, you know, go somewhere else. Mm. I'll say, look, let us let me show you things that are similar, mm -hmm. things that you might find more interesting, right. more exciting. Sure. Instead of, you know kind of punishing yourself and wasting time and money trying to find this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 2020. There's so many interesting things oh. out there. It's mind boggling. <laughs> Mind boggling. So, so yeah. So yeah, Giovanni and you guys, your guys are great when you people you. walk in and it, it's, if they're looking for something, you're like, if you like that, yes, take a look at this yes. one. Yes. And it's yes. like, you guys always got me leaving with an extra something, and then, well, <laughs> which is fun. great. It's fun because also it's expanding your palate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you guys, uh, you know, you'll say, well, I, I would have never thought to try that, but mm -hmm. this is pretty interesting. And thank goodness we've cultivated a great clientele here. Mm -hmm. Most of our clients are very adventurous. They're very open-minded. They're very self-actualized. So, uh, you know, if, if they see, uh, you know, a Pappy, of course they're going to buy it. Yeah. But do they think that's the last thing on earth that's the best? Maybe yeah. not. You know, there's yeah, other yeah. things out there. There's so. some sliced bread over there too. Yeah, I'm sure. just gonna... <laughs> so now, um, the, the maker's private select, yes. uh, your Japanese yes. release, uh, 
And then Pat Maley was on the, the Facebook and he wants to know how much is it? And uh, can you hold one for him? <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, $69.99. All right. Uh, and yeah, my pleasure. We still, uh, we have about, a, I'd say about 25% of the barrel left. And uh, absolutely, come on. Right. We'll take care All of right. it. What there time you do you go, go Maley? Get uh, up here. <laughs> yeah, 11, so we're here at 11 to 8 tomorrow. So uh, our pleasure. Or maybe later if he wants. Uh, the other thing I was going to tell you is, I don't know if you had tried or we talked about that, Bib and Tucker. No. So Bib and Tucker is a really unique brand. This is a brand that in its regular format mm -hmm. is what I call my uh, my Blanton's alternative. Okay. So uh, Blanton's is 93 proof. Mm -hmm. Bib and Tucker is 92 proof. Okay. Uh, where Bib and Tucker is a little more interesting is it actually has an age statement of six years old. Mm. On average, they're seven and a half year old barrels. Okay. And it uses a number one charring, which means the amount of time that they burned the inside of the barrel yeah. mm -hmm. was only 15 seconds. Oh, okay. That is one grade away from a toasted barrel. Mm. Okay. And so what that does is instead of, so Bib and Tucker's angle is instead of being that really caramelized, mm -hmm. heavy vanilla, they're going for the toffee, butterscotchy mm. notes. Okay. And it's like forty nine ninety six. Okay. Uh, I have a rack behind you, but it's uh, I'm out of it. It's yeah. become so popular ah. because for all the people that look for Blanton's, mm -hmm. This has become a nice alternative, and mm -hmm. you don't have to run around town looking for it. And it's incredibly flavorful and smooth. As a result, we ended up doing a single barrel of that. Okay. We were only, we were only one of two retailers in the whole state. Wow. They got to do a Bib and Tucker uh, single barrel. And Was that this guy, this brown bottle? Thank you. Yes, yes. So that's... Uh, it looks like it fell off of a wagon in the 1800s, right? It's like a, right? it's like a that, is this like 12 years on here? So that is a 12-year-old beautiful single barrel uh not quite cast strength it's actually 99 proof which is interesting uh number one charring non-chill filtered and it is absolutely delicious yeah. this one one of my clients uh lara she is uh, i consider her to have a great palate for a bourbon mm -hmm. she immediately uh uh dm'd me on facebook or i'm sorry she actually posted it on facebook and she said uh the vanilla finish on this is unbelievable uh, uh i have another uh, client yuko her and her husband, uh, Torben, uh, they had a regular bottle and this, and they posted each one side by side. Yeah, yeah. And they said, "This is the best thing I've ever had." Ah. So, uh, something unique. And these are these are experienced, you know. Right. Having having a, a more experienced palate. And so, and 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 if you do, you would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you're gonna love it because it's just. It's different. Flavorful. It's, it's different. Yeah. It's unique. And again, uh, we're always seeking that out. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, the next one. Another one, by the way, another uh, uh, alternative yeah. to uh, Blanton's mm -hmm. that sells really well for me is the new Riff single barrel. Yeah. That stuff is, they don't advertise. Mm -hmm. You don't really see a lot of stuff about it. No. Most people have never had them. And their regular single barrel, that is, the, the batches can vary. I think the one we have right now is 106 proof. Mm. So it's a little higher than it's a, It's got a nice warmth to it's it. It's got a nice warmth to it. Exactly. <laughs> well said. Well said. <laughs> But it, there is something about it that it, it starts out with a little uh, toffee, a sweet corn, a little toffee of vanilla. But on the back end, the 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 finish just kind of floats off your palate. Ah. It's it does it's such a smooth, unique uh, uh, a bourbon. And so we were honored that they came to us also and said, "Hey, do you want to do a barrel with us?" Oh, mm. they're only releasing ten barrels in Michigan mm. uh, over this past year. And I think mine was one of the last ones to hit Michigan. Ideally, we're going to release it this coming week. Oh. And this one has a lot of uh, – it, it really brought out a lot of interesting thoughts and feelings and ideas. Okay. Uh, because, as you know, sometimes, you know, the sticker thing is a big thing on yeah. bourbons, as yeah. you know. And sometimes the sticker thing gets a little bit out of hand. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. get kind of <laughs> – yeah, uh, you don't really do stickers. You just have some subtle ones right, saying very Keiko's subtle, Market. It yeah. Usually has something to do with so in the Bib and Tucker, happy Thanksgiving, right? It was have a blessed Thanksgiving. 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 Yep. It's kind of sending out our message of love mm -hmm. and yeah. you know be safe, be healthy, you know live life, be blessed. In the in the Maker's Mark, it was the Japanese edition, which had to do with the story. Sure. Mm -hmm. So when I get the and I'm going to reveal this, usually I leave it for a surprise. Hey. But <laughs> when I when I get the new riff. When I thought about it, when I drank it, I was sipping on it. I was thinking, you know, what's my email going to be about when I send this? Mm. And when I thought about New Riff, I thought about 
the classic rock station, the riff. <laughs> okay. And 94.7 yes, WCS. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so 101 point. No, 101 yeah, point. Yes, yes. That was the riff. So right. that's the riff. I'm not the radio guy. You no, are. Okay. Yeah. And back in the day, uh, I, uh, 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 Jim Johnson, yeah. and JJ from JJ in the Morning uh -huh. Crew, uh -huh. and uh -huh. Ken Calvert. They actually used to live in here. Ken, Cal Ken Calvert used to live down the street, uh -huh. and we'd play football in his backyard when we were kids. He's a great guy. <laughs> and so they would bring me the old riff stickers. Uh -huh. Remember the oval shaped yep. stickers? Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So I had this collection of these stickers, right, over yeah. the years. And I thought, when I do this barrel, I'm going to do. I'm going to do one of these stickers or at least try to mimic it. Yeah. And I thought it was kind of bittersweet it's, because when I moved out of the house, I went back one day and I was looking at stuff and I said, uh, mom, where's my uh, stickers? Where? And she's like, oh, I threw that box out. Uh, so, <laughs> I had all these like a shoe box of all these stickers, you uh, know, Van Halen, mm, HCDC, yeah. everything, yeah, yeah, all this yeah. stuff. So that was kind of bittersweet. And then I was also thinking uh, there's a, I think it was out in two, uh, 2015, Van Halen had done a song called take your whiskey home okay mm. and you know it, it really I, I love van halen and and uh when eddie van halen passed away it was i was really sad about this mm -hmm. and then i was thinking about whiskeys and if you hear this song it's one of the most interesting songs it starts out with this like jazzy profile hmm. and then uh david lee roth gets into his uh, groove and uh eddie van halen starts with this crazy guitar and it's just a, a really cool song mm. And I and that kind of re reminded me of it because new riff is like a riff on a guitar, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it's your perspective on things. And I thought, you know what, God willing, twenty twenty one is going to be a new riff. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's hope. And I'm so hoping. that's why that I, I can't wait to get this and release it because that one's going to have a lot of meaning, okay, and a lot of interesting uh, stories behind it. So wow, you have a lot stuff. going on. So before yeah, before really the holiday, do. that'll be out. <laughs> Hopefully, God Hopefully. willing, this next week uh, okay. we're going to release it. If the truck there. shows up. If the truck shows up. <laughs> yes, Flanagan, you know it's, the routine. With, it's uh, not going through uh, so, uh, Hazel Park. Where yes. is that? Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Highland, Highland Park. Park Highland yeah. Park. So in, de in defense of the distributors, it's just, you know, COVID oh, is obviously reaching yeah. Out. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, finding drivers, warehouse managers, oh, yeah. and all that uh, stuff. Uh, so it's kind of like. It's kind of like Christmas every week because we never know what we're gonna get <laughs> when we get the cases. What's on the like, truck oh, this did week? Did we get that stuff? Yeah, did we get yeah. the fireball? Did we get whatever? <laughs> so, uh, but interesting stuff. Yes, really interesting stuff. And I, I'm gonna say it again. I'm trying to coin a phrase. Yes, you know, it's the COVIDian timeline that, that yes. we are living in. Yes, right yes. now, the fact that you have been able to still take care of your clients. Yes, and bring in new clientele and help them to understand, you know, what's out there. Yes, no kudos. Thank you. you. Know, Thank you so much. Yeah. You know what? Again, we love our clients. Our clients are just as as uh, adaptive as we are. So, you know, when when everything really went down in March, we started doing curbside service, mm -hmm. and our clients were amazing. You know, they're like, "Oh, this is great. I don't want to get out of my car anyways. I don't want to touch anything and I, <laughs> and all this stuff." So they pull up, we take care of it, and uh, again, it's a different dynamic. And yeah. As long as everybody's happy, I like okay. to browse, and that that was the yes. thing that made me crazy because yes. I'd come I just see Jamie at the, at the window, so, just looking like to see the bottles. I swear, this is the, uh, it was funny and sad. It was almost like the kid in the window, you know, uh -huh. looking outside. And we had clients, and they're like, "But I, I need to come in. Yeah, I yeah. need to come I in need and see." To what see. I, and we'd say, "Look, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we're just trying to be safe here." Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So when we did open, a lot of people came in, and you know, again. We had all these interesting things and mm -hmm. oddities and stuff like that. So I can't complain about anything. You no. just got to pivot and make sure everybody's happy. And, uh, you know, my heart really breaks for a lot of our friends that have restaurants oh, and yeah. bars yeah. and stuff like that. It, you know, they can't do anything right. for obvious reasons. And they do the servers. Right. And then, you know, I right. Just, yeah, it's just it's it's, it's, it's not easy beyond and, a challenge. Uh, I, I just pray for them every day that they can just make it through. Mm -hmm this season yeah and you know and that we get through all this and they can get back on their feet if we could all raise enough money to help them out it would mm. be I awesome know. but you're also doing stuff to you know help raise money to yes. help out other individuals yes. too yourself here. you're auctioning off one of those uh make is it are they maker staves so that yes so that is so actually, there's trees you can actually in the shot you can see the one of them yes. no i'm lying you can't it's see it's it anymore it's over there uh, yes so uh <laughs> so that was actually uh hazel ravines in downtown here in downtown birmingham they had started this a few years ago where uh, it's it's really, again, another gut-wrenching thing. Uh, in Michigan, mm -hmm. when someone is in the foster care system, mm. 
once they turn 18, they are given $250 and they say to them, bye, oh see ya, good luck. And so this is, you know, as, as a father of four children, four young children, it is really emotional. Mm -hmm. And so when they had told me about this, I said, you know, we'll do what we can. And so one of my uh, uh, clients, Tony B, he's a great guy, uh, helped me out. And Maker's Mark was actually very generous to donate. Uh, these are actual staves that, you know, would go into a mm -hmm. barrel. And they're shaped like a, a tree. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Tony is a great woodworking guy. Mm -hmm. He uh, put this all together. I had a vision. Mm -hmm. He had the talent. Uh, Tony put it all together and it came out beautifully. So what the smaller one is the uh, prototype, if you will. Perfect. And then the taller Perfect. one was the 2.0 or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so we're going to auction that off and uh, give the money to the kids. And obviously, Caitlin is going to supplement, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> do matching funds, as they say, because it was really personal for us. And, and that, that goes through the 24th of, 24th, this, of exactly, this month. Of this month. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a contest and there's a bunch of retailers in Birmingham. So if you go to your favorite salon, mm -hmm. uh, like Figo Salon, if you go to Tender, which is a women, a high-end women's clothing store, mm -hmm. uh, and, and a bunch of places in town have different trees that mm -hmm. they've decorated and oh. done things with. And uh, you kind of vote on, on your favorite tree and kind mm -hmm. of donate. And either way, it goes to a very, very yeah. good cause because... Helping yeah, kids get off on the right oh foot, you know, coming uh, out of the foster system, oh you know, 250 gosh. isn't going to, well, right. was, what was that? 600, 800 bucks for uh, yeah. the stimulus didn't help yeah, at all. Right. Yeah, yeah, 250 yeah. Right. Help it's not either, even a dent. So. And it's, no. it's, it's heartbreaking. And, uh, you know, it's like, you got to do what you got to do these yeah. days. If, if, if you don't walk away from COVID thinking there's a lot of people that need your help or that you're blessed in some way, yes. mm -hmm. uh, then you don't understand what happens. So, yeah. It's about helping people taking care of others, mm -hmm. especially kids. You, you know, you got to give them a chance to live life. Yeah, and you've been here forty six years. You've yes. been doing this. It's a second generation family. Yes. you have been giving back for a yeah. long time. So I'll and tell this you, is just another way of doing it. Absolutely, I will tell you uh, another favorite charity of ours is Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Again, for various personal reasons, and so every year they do this great event called uh, Derby for Kids. Mm. And so around the Kentucky Derby time, oh, uh, they do these various events. Mm -hmm. And we'll donate really cool stuff that has to do with bourbon nice. or the derby. And uh, it turns out to be a great fun event and a great yeah. fundraiser for kids there because awesome. a lot of people don't realize they need help too. So right. there's so many charities out there and so many things. You just have to pick you know, the stuff you love that you believe in and kind of stick with it mm -hmm. and hope for the best. You know, yeah. That's all you can do. You got to take care <laughs> of people. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you take care of all your customers Thank and you. then you know it, it all spills back in the community. We Thank love you. that. Thank you. Um, you had some notes, right? Was there something you wanted to talk about? Just, was you know, there... I, I really wanted to talk about the number one thing I want to tell my clients. Well, my clients know this, but yeah. to tell bourbon drinkers yeah. is just there's so many things out there. Absolutely. Right? There's so many, and, and not just bourbon drinkers, uh, tequila, scotch, because, you know, every segment now mm -hmm. has this hard to get limited edition. Sure, thing. sure. And instead of people punishing themselves or paying more or, or wasting oh, their time, secondary, there's yeah. so many things that you can enjoy. So I just like clients to know that, look, you know, if you're open-minded, there's a whole world out there. It's 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, thank God we're in the most, you know, the best place on earth in the sense of <laughs> having a variety and, uh, you know, options and yeah. stuff like that. Because you had a, a pretty cool little bottle over here and you had a little sign that says more interesting than Weller, but it's yes. only it's only 30 bucks, twenty nine yes. twenty nine ninety yeah. nine. So <laughs> the reason is, uh, so Weller is a weeded bourbon, yeah. uh, 90 proof and then 107 proof. This is a weeded bourbon, 100 proof. 100 so proof. right in the middle. 100 not, proof. Not 90, yeah. <laughs> not 90, not 107. What's interesting about this, David Nicholson was a guy who was a grocery store owner in Missouri. <laughs> And he would source from Weller back in the day. Oh. And at some point, uh, he gets out of the business and his, you know, things change or whatever. So today, a lot of people will go scour the stores in Missouri thinking they're going to find older bottles of this. Sure. Because they it would essentially be old Weller bottles yeah. that they're finding. And again, another great alternative. Uh, you know, there's so many, there's so many weeded bourbons out there. There's so many unique things out there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're always going to have somebody that goes for that right. you know, that hunt this right. is like a sure. this is an archetypal that's uh, their second job almost right <laughs> right and this is like an anthropological thing right yeah uh, you want to hunt for this thing that's really hard to find and mm -hmm. and uh 
you know, it becomes fun. And, and I'm guilty of doing that. You know, I love watches and cigars and mm -hmm. uh, all these other things. And in every segment, uh, this, this happens. And mm -hmm. so, you know, like when this week Rolex, uh, uh, the Paul, old Paul Newman Rolex Daytona oh, was oh auctioned goodness. off, I think in, at Christie's it went for like $5 million. Jeez. And I had to look at it twice because I'm like, wait, is that, is that comma in the wrong place? Does it tell time <laughs> differently? Yeah, right, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but what happens is people immediately will go out and say, I want to get a Rolex. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so yeah. uh, a $10,000 Rolex doesn't seem that much. <laughs> yeah. Five Check out my five Psycho, <laughs> Cisco, where is yeah. it? my Casio. <laughs> right. And the same thing happens in the world of spirits. So yeah. when McAllen bottles get auctioned off at Sotheby's and Christie's yeah. for hundreds of thousands of dollars or more, yeah. then you immediately get this influx of people that say, I want to, I want to try this. I haven't had this, or right. I need a bottle of McAllen. You know, I want to, it's nice to feel part of that that yeah. club, uh, you know, to feel that mm -hmm. okay, somebody spent million, hundreds of thousands, I'll spend uh, seventy and I'll right, get the right. kind of experience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for sure. So uh, being open minded, I guess is yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a fun time to be a drinker, mm -hmm. and if you're open minded, you'll just have the best time. So right. you're really uh, active on Facebook, and yes. is that the spot? Where people so, can find about the things coming out. So we're on Instagram, Facebook. Okay. Uh, we try to keep things regular up there. When things happen, uh, whether it's releases mm -hmm. or just, you know, I'll do a thing like Wine Wednesdays, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just to keep people informed because there's so many things out there. That's usually it. Uh, but to be honest with you, uh, to get the richest form of communication, it is uh, we send out emails. Oh, okay. And so on my email list, that's where you – get the story about the barrel that's so, the hot one that's a line. Right. So, so uh you know i'll quote shakespeare and, uh, nice <laughs> nice uh you know talk about different cultures and stuff like people that. sign up on that through your website they could do it on facebook oh, okay, uh, they could do it here if they want okay. um mm -hmm. you know and, and most of our, our clients are pretty loyal so uh they'll just before they hear you know before anything happens so yeah. mm -hmm. uh but yeah usually facebook instagram and the email list that's how to find out about everything. Awesome. All right. So some cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so What's going on? <laughs> yes. Uh, tons of stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, for us, uh, again, just trying to stay ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, so this, I think this week should be uh, not just in uh, uh, bourbons, but the latest edition of the McAllen series, the edition Ooh. series. Mm. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but uh, McAllen six years ago, started this edition series and part of it was to highlight that something doesn't have to have an age statement on it mm -hmm. the u.s gets the largest amount of age statement scotch in the world mm. and also in japan canada all these other but they don't really care they just want it to be good right we associate age with uh you know a certain gravity quality, almost. Yeah, quality yeah. right yeah. Now. so they did this to highlight it every edition that came out had something like six barrels that it was finished at. They were okay. really unique. Hmm. They partnered up. Uh, so number three, for example, they partnered up with a guy named Roja or Roja Dove. This guy doesn't drink. He's a perfume maker. Oh, and what they did huh. is Bob Delgarno, the master distiller from McAllen at the time, had this guy smell the barrels. And he, this, this Roja Roja Dove guy, uh, picked the barrels that he, he thought smelled the most unique. And Bob Delgarno mixed them up together. Oh. And that was the number three release. So each wow. one had this really cool story. Yeah. And each one, when they started out, they were like 99. I think they're 150 some odd dollars today. Yeah, yeah. But each one has triple or even more in price. Wow. Quadrupled or more in price. Yeah. And if you have the, and this is McAllen, according to rumors, uh. has a thing about the number six. And so people thought they were going to go like, 10 bottles, 10 editions, but they're capping it off at six. Oh, okay. And this is, I think, going to be released this week. All right. And so people have bottles that they've saved, and, and the set mm -hmm. is going for thousands on the yes. second market. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, again, it's one of these things that you you kind of want to have, and it's special. Yeah. Is so there a horse on top of it, too? No horse on top. Yeah, this is strictly good. the liquid inside, <laughs> and uh, no, no magic uh, bottles. But the bottles are, I mean, they do a lot of thought and effort McAllen does in the uh, boxes and the story and letting you know what's going on. So that's something new that's going to be uh, fun and interesting mm. and really just 
waiting for everything to normalize again. Mm, sure. Because a lot of these distilleries have either slowed down, closed down mm -hmm. for you know COVID, and just waiting for uh, things to get back as far as the yeah. distribution network and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, uh, and, you know, it'll be here. If this is the worst that's going to happen, us meaning that we don't have everything we want to drink, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so be it, as they say. If that's the worst. I can't wait for there to be a, a tasting, and a, Matt and I can come and yes. set up in another corner, oh, and that. then yeah. just kind of chit chat while while a tasting's going on. Once once we that. can have a you know that. bumping elbows kind of kind of party. Uh, yeah. to God's ears. If you need someone so. to play music, we can might be able to handle that for you too. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, we'll. Uh, I would love that. I can't wait for those days. I can't and, wait. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just uh, I, I'd like to not make this because i mean we've been talking about this yes ever i know uh i want to come and do it again because it's fun because you're yeah. a friend of ours and it's very Thank casual you. and mm -hmm. uh you know there's no pressure i'm not sitting here like you know reading <laughs> i'm, like, oh, no, 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 I'm, gonna, right, I'm not gonna micromanage that. your comments yes. so I, I actually, I mainly might wanna, but yeah uh, <laughs> i have one more thing i, I just want to share yes is yes you have national brands international brands but you also support local yeah absolutely so yeah. uh we have a whole shelf of just yeah. local stuff yeah and it's really fun because uh you know as you know uh, michigan is a big distilling state featured in various magazines yeah uh, there's some incredible incredible stuff mm -hmm. detroit city distillery yeah. valentine uh you know anywhere you go so some, i thought thought i saw two james down there two james oh my yeah. god that place the beer phenomenal, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. phenomenal stuff mm -hmm. so yes there's definitely some great stuff and their their bottle by the way the two james the grass widow is if i'm not mistaken the only full production mm -hmm. bourbon that's finished off in madeira barrels huh. and it is so delicious and just a unique product. I'm actually out of it right now. So uh, Traverse City here as well. Traverse City, yeah. uh, you know, anything we can get our hands on. Uh, Iron Fish, mm -hmm. uh, just all great places. Mm -hmm. And they all have quality products. And it's fun. It's fun mm -hmm. being part of that too. Yeah. So, you know, you're part of this team that's making yeah. things happen. Yeah. So we're blessed in that respect too. Yeah. Can't complain. All right. So Caicos Market yes. is on Facebook. Yes. And uh, Instagram. what's the Instagram handle? Uh, Instagram, Just... Caicos underscore market. Okay. Yes, on Instagram. All right. And, uh, we're all here. Anything you need? Ask questions. That's the, that's the yeah, best yeah, you can yeah, do. Is just, and they, these actually, guys, these are the guys that have answers, which is brilliant. You. So, uh, Kinko's Market. It's uh, well, yeah. Give the uh, location right. Fourteen Mile and Woodward. Yes. Uh, in Birmingham, if you're in the Metro Detroit area, definitely, yes. definitely worth a, a, a trip over. Yes, at the beginning, it's a destination that you Thank want you. to come to. Thank you. you. God bless you. Thank so, uh, thanks for joining us. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. We appreciate it. Man Cave Happy Hour on all the socials and uh, the <laughs> website as well. Mm -hmm. uh, gentlemen, cheers. 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 Happy holidays. God bless you guys. Thanks, Thank man. you so much. <laughs> cheers. That's so far away from the.